Hallelujah. There is something specific he's trying to do in this season, like right now. I mean, I'm just prophetically speaking to you. The Lord is putting together building blocks. He's building something. There is some things that are going to be released in the earth if they haven't already been released in the earth. And he's building his people. He's building his church. He's building individuals that, woo, thank you, Lord, that they would release his kingdom the way he has asked for it to be released. These messages, these words, what God has been saying to you as an individual, they're important. This season is important. Please don't miss it. Please don't miss it. Hallelujah. All right. Let's look at Mark 9, 23. Oh, and it says, Mark 9, 23. Let's go there, and let's go there in the New King James. Mark 9, 23 in the New King James. And this is, this is important, right? Because I've already said, as a man thinketh that his heart, so is he. This message is believing God. And this is why it's so important. These two scriptures right here <clears throat> are enough to make you run around the building a hundred times, change your life. If you don't read anything else, if you could get these two scriptures I'm about to bring up to you, it's a game changer. It's a complete game changer. Mark 9, 23 says this. It says, Jesus said to him, huh, "You, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Hold up. Wait a minute. You mean Jesus said, yeah. Jesus said, if, if you can believe. Come on, dude. If you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Now, I'm going to tell you, you can't tell a man like me that. You, you can't tell a man like me that all things are possible to him who believes. Because I believe. Just show me what I need to do. I believe. And see, the Lord took me back and he showed me. This is actually the definition of No Limit Global. This is where it came from. Holy Spirit gave me the name, and then he turned around and gave me the scripture to back it up. He said, I want you to call it No Limit Global. And then he said, all things are possible to him who believes. Let me say it a different way. There is no limit to him who believes. There is no limit to him who believes. Now, if this scripture is true, and it's been in the Bible since it was made, we should be seeing more from believers. There is something we don't clearly understand or we haven't possessed. Because if it says all things are possible to him who believes, either we don't understand what this is saying or it's not telling the truth. And I'm 100% positive this is the truth. There must be more that we must understand. And then let's look at same book, Mark 11, 23 through 25. And it says, for assuredly I say to, say, <clears throat> for assuredly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you will have them. Hold on. These are scriptures that we've been quoting forever. My God doesn't lie. So my challenge here is, he said, you tell me that I can move mountains. See, you got to be bold and stand up. Because if you tell me that I can move mountains, if I believe that I receive, then I'm expecting to see some mountain moving. Come on, man. I, I, I'm expecting. See, I don't think that he's just talking. I don't think that's an analogy. I don't think that's a simile. I think that's legitimately what he said. If you had faith to move a mountain and you believe and you receive, you shall have those things when you pray. The issue is, is that we've been trying to receive and not really believing, and therefore... There's no receiving when you pray. Why? Because our imaginations were damaged. Because we cast them away. Instead of casting down vain imagination, we cast it away our imagination. And God's been speaking to us through our imagination since the day we were born. Hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hmm. And so we have a hard time believing. Because in your imagination, right? If you, what does the scripture say? If you believe, you receive when you pray. Let me let me tell you. I I, I have to use examples. It's the best thing to have. You, we're just we're, listen. Holy Spirit, we're just printers. 
We, that's all we are. We're, we're literally 3D printers. He gives us a word. That word becomes, turns into something on the inside of us, right? The word, every word associated with a vision or an image. That image is on the inside of you when you receive the word. Then the question is, how do you see yourself with the word? Right? How do you see yourself with that word that you heard about a new car? Do you see yourself driving the car? Can you see yourself in the car? Let me tell you, I've had some amazing faith uh, miracles that have happened in my life that have come through believing. And I'm going to tell you, all of them, almost all of them have come a specific way. And I'll tell you how they came. Once I got to the point where I could see it, not here, but I could see it. I mean, I get to a point where you can see it, and I, I can turn it around, and I can sit in it, and I can drive it, and I can start the motor. I mean, it was to the point where I had built the three-dimensional model in the realm of my heart. Once the 3D model was built in my heart, just like a printer, it comes right on out. That was a funny sound effect, by the way. See, it's just, it's just like, see, what does a printer do? A printer, a printer takes digital information, not tangible, digital information. It receives that digital information. And once it formulates it and organizes it, it puts it into something and prints it out into the natural world. <laughs> you got to see this thing. So it takes digital information to bring into the physical world. Once it's organized the digital information, it then releases it into the physical world. That's what you are. <laughs> you get spiritual information. And then your job is to release that spiritual information into the, the, the this world, this physical world. So let's say it a different way. So you get spiritual revelation that you are to release, just like a printer, into this world. But first, you've got to organize that which you have received in the spirit. You know, the two messages prior to this were open up the gates we coming in. And then the, the, the other one was faith memorials. See, open up the gates explains to you, Jacob's ladder, that the angels are ascending and descending on the house of God. And you are the house of God. So they are ascending and descending, and they're writing things on the canvas of your imagination. They're writing the, the, the book. They're, they're writing the new job. They're writing how to fix that marriage. They're writing how to save that child. They're writing how to start that business. They're writing how to start that church. They're writing, come on, they're writing the story of your life. But if you cast out your imagination, you won't believe. And if you won't believe, you won't open up the gate. And so like a printer, you'll just sit there spinning your wheels. Never actually taking what you receive digitally and putting it out physically. What I'm telling you right now is, if you would get a hold of this, wake your imagination back up. Wake up the believer on the inside so you can see and believe. And then get that thing and, and, and meditate. Meditate. When the Lord gives you something, meditate on it. That means you take it, you turn it around, you think about it in different ways, different angles. And, and, and you're, you're basically building the three-dimensional model of the house, the three-dimensional model of the marriage, the three-dimensional model of the child. See, you're building these three-dimensional models. And see, once you can build the model, you can see the model, you can spin it around in your hand, and you, and you know, like you know, that you can see yourself in it. It's just a matter of time. before It's going to print on out. Come on, man. We're just digital printers. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Even the Bible says, meditate on God's word day and night and you will make yourself prosperous. Why? Because as you're meditating on it, you're turning it over. You're getting a vision for it on the inside. The believer is getting it. And see, you, see, you get a vision of the word. You turn it over. You, you, you see it in a different angle. You turn it over. And see, what's happening is you're not only seeing it, you're seeing you and it together. And see, once you and the word that God gave you are together and you can see them in here, <laughs> and I, I, I listen. Now I, I want to be clear. I'm not talking about see as in get a glimpse of. I'm talking about you got to be able to see. You got. Oh hallelujah! Look, I got a truck in my driveway right now that I had to see here first because I couldn't see it in these pockets. I'm gonna tell you right now, I couldn't see it in the pockets. But I listened to the Lord. I went and looked at the truck that was far outside of my range of being able to buy. I went and looked at it. Look, and even made an offer on it. Had no dollars in my pocket. Zero. So let me, I, I got to keep it real. Hopefully you're not watching this. Guy had a truck online. It was a truck that I had been talking to God about. Not that specific truck, but I had declared that specific truck from years ago. I've been telling people for years. I want a black truck sitting on 35s with black 20-inch rims. That's what I want. And if I can get one, I want a Tundra with the 1794 package. The truck showed up $5,000 under what it should be. I had $0,000. But the Lord said, go look at it. That's what you, you call for that, right? That's what you call for. Go look at it. So I did. I went and looked at it. Test drove. Couldn't believe the price was so cheap based on what it should have been. And then was crazy enough to make an offer on it. 
I made an offer on the truck with no dollars. I said, hey, man, I'm going to need about 10 days. Give me about 10 days, and, and here's what I can offer you. And if you take it, we'll, we'll, we'll have a deal. He said, yeah. I walked away from there going, I don't have any dollars. And it was a couple thousand. It was a few. How, do you, how many of y'all know God made a way? How many of y'all know God made a way? I drive the truck today. Why? It's because I started talking about a truck like that years ago, and I started saying, I want a black on black, black on black Tundra, sitting on black 35s with black wheels and all black truck. That's what I want. And I want a black bass boat to go with it. But here's what I'm going to tell you. I got the black on black Tundra sitting on 35s with the black bass boat, not because I deserve it, not because I worked too hard for it, but because I believed God. Because I believed God. Listen, as believers, that's all we got. We just got to believe our God. He's trying to get us to the place that he's trying to get us to. He's trying to take us somewhere, but we got to believe him. Stop casting out what he's sending us because it doesn't look right, because we don't know to trust our imagination because we haven't separated out and cast down vain imagination so that that which is in your imagination is only that which you put in there. There are letters, messages, businesses, home, everything. Angels are descending with this information on the house of God. And you, beloved, are the house of God. That information is coming to you. It's on the canvas of your imagination. Ask yourself in this moment, are you wiping things off your imagination that God is putting there? Because, oh, that's crazy. I can't do that. Oh, quit my job. Well, I can't do that. Oh, start a business. Oh, I can't do that. Oh, uh, be nice to my wife for a week straight. I can't do that. Have a kid. I can't do that. Are you wiping things off of the canvas of your imagination because of what happened when you were five? What happened when you were six? Remember what we're talking about, right? It's the reset, renewing your mind. It's a chance to change, to repent, to turn your mind so that you as a believer can begin to see with these eyes again. 